welcome to Off The Shelf Reviews. I'm the brother to Zach Galifianakis. And I'm Gary. And today we're going to review and discuss The Omen, which came out in 1976, directed by Richard Donner. Ian, why don't you give us the synopsis? Well, the story follows Robert Thorne, played by Gregory Peck. He and his wife have lost their son at childbirth and have been granted a chance to raise another son. As the boy grows older, though, Robert starts to realise that something might be slightly off with Damien. So this film came out at a time when there wasn't really a single film studio that wanted to make this film. This script went okay. everywhere, to yeah. every film studio, and they all took a look at it and went, no thank you, this is too scary, too frightening, too horrific, don't want to touch it. <laughs> Warner Brothers said, oh, we'll have that, thank you very much. <laughs> um, but then they were like, well, you know, we've had The Exorcist, huge success, so Warner Brothers are going ahead with The Exorcist too. Meanwhile, mm. the script for The Omen is sat there, and because they pressed ahead with The Exorcist 2, the rights to The Omen kind of went back into the, the owner's hands. So okay. they, were like, they were waiting for that day where it happens, where we get The Omen back, and then we're going into production. Yeah. Originally, the film was called Antichrist, before, <laughs> during production, it was changed to Birthmark. <laughs> before it was eventually changed to The Omen. Nice. And I don't know if you noticed, but there isn't actually a single mention of The Omen no. in the entire film. In the but entire film. the birthmark is a pretty big feature, so it was the Antichrist. And you can see why the script kind of changed name as it yeah. went. The script and the production didn't really come together. You know, they got Richard Donner on board, who had come straight from television. Yeah. This is I, his first time big movie directing. Mr. Goonies, you know, Mr. Superman 2. I, I, I don't know how I me ever missed that. How did I miss that? Right. <laughs> well, this is the film that launched Richard Donner's career. So he would go and make all those fantastic films that we kind of love. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so Richard Donner had got the script and he looked at it and he went, okay, so we don't really want to make a horror movie. So I'm going to take out references here to Satan. I'm going to take out these kind of clothed uh, hooves, you know, take out the satanic kind of stuff. Okay, yeah, yeah. Because he wanted to make a film where it was like, oh, well, maybe it's just psychological. Ah. That it's not really happening. And that got the interest in Gregory Peck, who they were kind of worried about sending the script to because just a year before, I mean, Gregory Peck had already retired from acting. Yeah, yeah. But uh, in 75, his son committed suicide with a gunshot wound to the head. What? And so they were like, well, do we get this actor out of retirement? And do we give him a script where in the opening sequence, his son dies? And Ooh. towards the end of the film, something else quite, you know, happens. But Gregory Peck was just like, I need to get out of retirement. I need to get out of my rut. I need to work on something. And he put something. his all into the film. So much so that you know, he kind of had plenty of verbal arguments with the director during production because you had this classic actor who'd been through so much compared yeah. to this brand new, fresh director who knew just... what he wanted. <laughs> Man, I, I've always remembered The Omen as that film where bad things happened on set. Oh, yes. You it's know, one of those. It's like, one of those. Like Poltergeist, like yeah. Exorcist. Like Poltergeist and like Exorcist. As I was growing up, I never got to see The Omen until I, I was like mid-twenties. You know, and even with the birth of Wikipedia, which I do practically live on, I... I didn't give myself enough time to, to look at this film. I was just like, oh yeah, we're watching The Omen. Like, psh, <laughs> oh, I know The Omen. Oh, I, don't, I don't know The Omen at all. The Omen has snuck up on me and scared the bejesus out of me. You know, there was a period in films where it was all Satan. You know, Rosemary's Baby, we're going to, you know, we're going to have satanic cults and everybody's in on it. Well, it's at that pivotal po moment in history as well. You know, it's like kind of just at the end of like the hippie craze. Yeah. You know, <laughs> do you really trust your neighbor? Do you know what they're up to? I mean, Charles Manson had obviously had his, yeah. you know. And, you know, the, the Omen and the Exodus, it was kind of, you had churches going, it's the worst thing ever. But then more and more people were reading Bibles and going to church because these yeah. films genuinely scared them. Yeah, yeah, there, there, there was such reality in the film. And when I first sat down to watch The Omen, I think I've only ever watched it twice. And this is the second time. So the film just starts with the music. Wow, that's, you know? that's it. that Jerry Goldsmith's music <laughs> right at the start. I'm like, this is the best bit about the film right here, right at the start. Uh, Jerry Goldsmith, just a legendary composer. Yeah. Interesting bit of trivia for you is that the music for this film was nominated for an Oscar. 
Nice. Where Jerry Goldsmith was like, oh, fuck you, Oscars. I ain't going because I've been nominated 15 times before and you ain't gave me shit. So he didn't go. <laughs> it's the only time Jerry Goldsmith has ever won an Oscar. <laughs> yeah. Which yeah. is devastating as well. It's like the one time he won, he didn't actually go. And then he continued to go ever since and never won again. Yep. Yeah. It's an omen. It's an omen. Uh, <laughs> but, but Gregory Peck, you know, he turns up at the hospital, Rome, Rome 6, uh, uh, you know, 8 a.m. And his son has died. You just hear this voice, you know, the child is dead. And I was sat there watching this film uh, uh, with my kind of new setup in my house with my headphones on. And not like my concentration, my notepad, and I was just like, I don't know if I really want to watch this. <laughs> you know, like I'm quite an emotional opening. I'm, 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 I'm getting into it. You know, and and uh, Robert and Catherine, played by Lee Remick, beautiful actress. Oh, absolutely, yeah. You know, but seeing her at the beginning with Gregory Peck, it's that whole kind of moral dilemma to which you could you know, ground and base an entire movie on just the drama of him there dealing with the fact that he's just been told his son has died at birth and some random doctor has just gone, here, take this one. <laughs> it doesn't have any parents. Nope. Here you go. And, and he's like, just like, well, I could just take this one to my wife and she, would she know the difference? I guess not. No. And uh, and then it cuts years later. Yeah. I, it montages the happy family. I totally forgot that that was actually in the movie. You know, it, it jumps like five years. Mm. And you have that part where they're next to the river. Yeah. And he's just laughing. The little, you know, they get scared because they're so loved up at this point that they, they lose Damien. And then they go back to the side of the river and he's just stood there laughing. And I'm like, throw him in. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, I, I, you know, well, hindsight's a great thing though. Well, yeah, because it cuts just a little bit later on and he's having a birthday party. <sighs> And the nanny is uh, takes one random look over at this uh, Rockweiler. Yeah. And the Rockweiler and her have this moment. <laughs> Just before she decides to give it all for Damien and head upstairs yeah. to throw herself out in one of the, uh, I don't know, the best or worst hangings in film. Now... All of most most of the sequences we're going to talk about in the Omen are iconic. Yes, they've been used so many times in horror documentaries and, and filmmaking. But immediately, I, I saw her looking at the dog. Question: Do you think she's in on it? No. See, I thought that as well. I've always because believed it, that there was the an Omen about her out. too. Yeah, the dog definitely did something to her. But you know, with I don't want to go into the sequels too much. But Dam um. Damien has the power to inflict psychological pain without doing or saying yeah, anything yeah yeah and so i think you know the power of this of satan uh was in the dog and the dog wanted yeah that's know. what that's what immediately makes she, it but more you, supernatural you for me than psychological because you, yeah you know we are literally saying the dog is a servant or is possibly satan himself hypnotizing yeah. a girl to go up onto the roof of a building and jump off and when her when she smashes through the window yes mm. and, and you've got the other lady there screaming yeah. then the silence of the people outside yes, the, the panic children. and the confusion you, that, it's that, done very realistically that shot of Lee Remick just holding Damien close to her yeah. you know uh, just to look at the start of look on her face and you've also got David Warner playing Keith Jennings <laughs> and David Warner I'll just say Star Trek any of the, the two Star yeah. Treks he was in Mason he was in you know, the, one of the best, greatest all-time actors. One of, one of. He is a fantastic actor. I think the last time I ever saw him was in Titanic. Mm. I never really saw him in anything past that. And, um, he was uh, the guy in Body Bags, I remember, who, who sold the hair company. Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, such a young David Warner, you know, taking photos and his camera. <laughs> like, is that God's work? Getting certain people to kind of get to Robert and Catherine and try to stop. Hmm. What we already know as the uh, as the audience as kind of the Antichrist. Yeah, it's it's unknown whether they were God, or the angels placed them, or it's just the mark of the devil, and therefore it's unescapable. It's branded. Well, we have obviously Patrick Troughton, you know, the second Doctor Who coming in as Father Brennan. He knows a lot. Yeah. You know, he knows that the child is the Antichrist, and he needs he it, it, the child needs to die. But Robert is just like no. You, you can't... It's crazy talk. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you can't believe that, you know. And I love the little office sequence that they have where he's like, I've already locked the door. And he starts to explain it. And obviously Gregory Peck is sat there just like, you know, he wants to call security right away. 
But then he's listening because there's certain things that the father is saying that that's catching Robert's attention. And and it starts to also, you, for me, the second time round, I, I, I started to question, like I said, who was in on it. Because we also get introduced to Miss Baylock, the new nanny. Oh, wow. She's definitely in on oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like a Satanist tattooed right across Satan her Satan has moved that pawn exactly where it needs to be. Yeah. <laughs> but but the family just accept it. Well, the, not at first. You know, she explained. She was like, oh, well, the agency, they knew that your previous nanny had died. So they just sent me. <laughs> well, I'd be like, oh, well, we'll, well see you tomorrow. They, they ask <laughs> her credentials and yeah. papers and she passes them on. And you're just like, okay, well, she's infiltrated quite easily into the family. Yeah, yeah. And it's not long before she's just like, no, you can't take Damien to the wedding. Yeah, to the church. You know, that's exactly. not a good idea. He's, it's a, not a good place for a five-year-old. And I'm sat there with the positioning that Richard Donner goes with, with Miss Baylock at the top of the stairs. Yeah. And Catherine at the oh, bottom. Oh, the power, yeah. Yeah, and Catherine's just like, no, I want my son here, now, dressed. And Miss Baylock's like... She knows she can't push it. Yeah. Okay, okay, I'll let it happen. But she also knows, because of the positioning, that, you know, she she she's a servant of the Antichrist. <laughs> right. And Satan, the dog, is basically in the house as well. Yeah. And... When they get him into the car, I mean, another iconic sequence where they're just driving up and the music starts to build. And Damien just keeps shooting that look at Catherine like, I'm not happy. I'm <laughs> not going in there, you know. So a little bit of trivia here for you is that for the auditioning of the boy, because they they spent a long time trying to find the right actor to play the boy. Yeah. So much so that Richard Donner was at a point so stressed that they were cast, they were uh, auditioning girls for the part. Really? Because it got... Desperate to the point where it wasn't happening. Ah, uh, female antichrist. Well, we'll get to that later. Right. But then the boy comes in and uh, Richard Don is just like, okay, attack me. And uh, and without and, and even if I say cut and stop attacking me, just keep attacking me. So, and so in the audition, this Harvey boy... Harvey Spencer Stevens, the little the, boy. Yeah, the very first thing he did was punch Richard Donner in the nuts. <laughs> Richard Donner bowls over in agony. And then the kid starts punching and scraping his face. Uh, Richard Donner's like, cut! Stop! Stop attacking me! And that encouraged the kid to get violent with him. <laughs> Richard Donner eventually, eventually got the kid away from him. And he was like, he's got the part. That's Damien. Take this little blonde kid away and dye his hair black. <laughs> and so then the sequence in the car with the mother. The oh. mother wasn't quite prepared yeah. for this violent attack. And you can see it in her face. <laughs> Jesus, yeah. <laughs> It, it, and it, come, it permeates through the screen to you oh, as yeah. well. You know, the way the music is, the way the film has been making you feel up to this point, that you're like, you are not taking him in there. Right. And after the attack and they they bring him home, the father is just, they're just kind of carrying on with their days as well. Like, I know, that was normal. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's something off with this child. And it's it's weird that at this time that was fine, where nowadays we'd be like, yeah, let's let's check him for marks all over his body. And so when you take him, when you take Damien to the zoo as well, you know, and it's just mum and son alone. You know, Catherine's really trying to bond with her son as well, yeah. but it's not her son, you know, and I, I get, I, I get that. And it's that look that she gives. It's like, why are the giraffes scared? You know, why are the baboons scared? Because the baboons know they can sense evil. Right. Yeah. And uh, again, she kind of freaks out and kind of speeds off through the zoo as well. And yeah, it's just kind of building the tension and the unease between the family. Yeah. And you have that sequence later with Damien, you know, with the nanny kind of walking past, and giving his mum evil looks. Yeah. But with his dad, he's like, totally fine. Well, he, he they need Robert alive because, you know, Robert is positioned to at least become aide to the president of the United States. Right. You know, and, uh, you know, he's working over in, in England and Father Brennan, organizes a meeting with him and says look you know this is break the breakdown of revelations you know this child is the antichrist and you know robert's just like no no and he explain and and father brennan explains to him he's like look your wife is pregnant you're gonna have a second child and he won't let that child live and, Ro and robert's just taken aback like no how how is that possible and i'm like yeah we, i mean you know aren't you guys monitoring what you're doing in your in your bedroom but when he leaves him, Father Brennan, Father Brennan's death, the, the <laughs> way the wind starts to build up, you know, and he's just, he starts to head to the church, doesn't he? Yeah, and yeah. And lightning strikes. And I was just like, 
lightning. So Satan has the power of the skies, which sometimes is considered heaven. Right. Yeah. Well, it's demonic weather. Right, yeah. <laughs> you right. know, the dark storm clouds, yeah, yeah. the lightning and the wind. and Yeah, and then uh, the uh, rod, oh. lightning rod, just comes loose. <laughs> and yeah, you know where it's going. <laughs> when it, when it stabs him down, I sat there for a second and I paused it and I was just like, it's such a simple effect, yeah, you know, of just having him hang on this thing. But with the way that it's been so built up with the music and, and everything going on, that when it hits, you know, it's just as good nowadays as one of those CGI effects of a knife in a face that you sometimes you see. Well, you know? I was going to say it's. Um... The effect here is done really well, and and, it, and in comparison to the remake, which came out in two thousand and six, where yeah. it's an entirely CGI rod going through, which looks fucking awful. <laughs> well, the, the, the effect I've... here, the optical effect in the way that they did it by yeah. having like the second half of the of the pole that hits him already in the ground coming yeah. up to meet him instead, so it kind of looks like it's gone through. It's just done so quickly. Yeah. And like, it's so effective. Yeah. It's so well done compared to an over-the-top CGI. It was the generation oh. of remakes, man. Well, well still we're still in it. In the generation of remakes. Keith finally gets to Robert and starts to explain about how he's been taking photographs of people. You know, he took photographs of the nanny, he took photographs of Father Brennan, and in each and every shot, he came across what appeared to be a their, nomen. <laughs> the, the nomen of how they were going to die, you know, the rope and the, and the pole. And this starts to intercut as well with Catherine, like, doing the most stupidest cleaning I think I've ever seen in my entire life. You know, wanting to deal with a plant on a ceiling while overlooking a balcony and standing on a rickety table. But take that into combination of Damien doing the circles in the room. <laughs> He's doing the know? shining. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just didn't think that while yeah. I was watching. I was like, who'd win in a race if you put both... <laughs> Danny Torrance you know, Damien. <laughs> <laughs> they just cycling down corridors. Yeah. Man. Well, I don't want to be in that house. I would love to see that. I would love to see that. But we, we, we have... We know what's coming. Yeah. <laughs> and the collision happens, and we watch the mother tumble over the balcony, and she grabs on for dear life. Yeah. I'm looking at the fall, and I'm like, eh, you could, you could survive that. <laughs> you could probably survive could. that. Just She's trying to land right. She's wearing heels. She's yeah. probably break a hip. But <laughs> the, 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 the flip around is pretty bad. Behind the scenes, the actress was just like, I ain't doing it anymore. I've looked at the fall and I ain't doing it. No. Like, I don't care how many people you got down there to catch me. I'm not doing it. So they, they set up the special effect. And so they put her on a dolly. Yeah. And instead of falling straight down to the floor, she's actually being dragged to a wall. Uh, and they put everything on the wall yeah, to make see, it look like so that it, it defied gravity so that they could but, do the effect. Yeah, that's it. But to me, I'm just like, that doesn't look right because when she kind of flips, she kind of just lay. Yeah, that, yeah. that's what that's what happened. Because she, she, she just threw like, herself up against the wall. Yeah, and I, 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 I said... They oh, got the effect. I mean, it works. Yeah, it's just everything is just building up. You know, Father Brennan's predictions and the revelations of, look, you know, he's going to take away everything around you um, and then finally to accept your power. And the fact that... Like, I'm not a religious person. You know, religion has kind of been there around me all my life. But the omen took it to a completely another level when you've got David Warner reading Revelations. And he's just like, look, the comet. That's what they talk about. Mm -hmm. You know, this, this, this star passed over. It was just a normal phenomenon. Or, you know, everybody just went, ooh. Another one happened, like, 6th of, was it 6th of June, five years ago, at this hospital, you know, and I'm sitting there going, oh, shit. And you can see Gregory Peck, Gregory Peck emotes so brilliantly in this film of just, this is all sounding strangely familiar. <laughs> I'm just like, you know, when they go to Father Brennan's uh, bedroom and it's just plastered with Bible pages yeah. everywhere. And it's it's so weird because obviously we're revealed then that David Warner's taken a picture of himself and he sees obviously the slice across his neck, which is fucking awesome. I get to that. But the revelation as well of the mark on the priest's body. Mm. Now, I'd never, I must have forgotten that for the first time around because the revelation this time, I was like, so the priest was in on it. Yeah. 
He will kill you. That's enough. And with your wealth and power, he will establish his counterfeit kingdom here on Earth, receiving his power directly from Satan. You know, this is... I started to get to the point where I was just like, this is so well organised. There is no way, there's no way out of it, you know. Uh, and it just seems so mind-boggling because they start to go to... Once Catherine is in hospital and she's not pregnant anymore, you know, Robert, it's, he, he heads to Jerusalem so that he could meet up with an exorcist. And while there, you know, they, they're told about the daggers. You know, you've got to stab him with these daggers to destroy his mind. It also needs to be spirit. on the altar of a church as yeah. well. <laughs> yeah, you know, and you, you, need, you need to do all this to kill this child. And like you said at the beginning, the film could have been played psychological. You know, this could all be in Robert's head. And right. It's just a matter of coincidence. But obviously certain things are in place. Mrs. Baylock is just looking after Damien non-stop 24 7 there is nobody else that interferes the guard with dogs <laughs> yeah you know she's gotten rid of all the other staff as well Catherine mm. is in the hospital and she's obviously out of the picture robert is distracted trying to deal with this and once they do finally get the daggers the changing gregory peck i don't understand he throws the daggers away he's like yeah no, i ain't doing it it's all i'm not it's all bullshit <laughs> i'm not killing this child i'm like You've already seen the evidence that the hospital Damien was in, where you were five years ago, has burned down. The mm. priest himself, you know, is, is, is kind of partly in on it because he handed you Damien. He basically handed you the Antichrist. And on top of that, you know, you've been to the, the, the graveyard, the graveyard sequence where he opens the grave for his son. Yeah. And you see the hole in the baby's skull. I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, they killed your child. They <laughs> killed your child so that they could give you Damien. Yeah. Damien. And I'm like, you have no way out of this. So why are you throwing the daggers away? You know, you should be like arming yourself. Like, I'm ready for this. But it leads to David Warner's fucking awesome death. <laughs> Yeah, it was foreshadowed in the picture. It was foreshadowed when he was looking in the mirror. And now we see this sheet of glass oh. just come loose off the back of the truck, straight into his neck. Yeah. And you watch his head spin it through the air <laughs> as his body kind of slumps over. <laughs> Apparently it was edited in such a way so that if you were to look away from the initial shock, yeah. when you looked back, his head would still be spinning on screen. <laughs> That's... Uh, it's... <laughs> You know, the Omen, like I said, the Omen had probably got like the top three, maybe the top five most yeah. iconic Yeah, I mean, for me, scenes. my original memory of the film was the, the credits roll after that sequence. Like, that was the last most <laughs> iconic moment of the film. Man, there was a part, <laughs> I swear, when I was a kid, when I found out that like a lot of horrible things had happened on like the sets of The Exorcist and, and The Omen, that I thought the actor had been killed. Right, okay. Because <laughs> when I, you know, I, I was just like, seeing it on a documentary, maybe one late one night, I was like, that must have been real. Right. You know? <laughs> but then watching it again when like the first time uh, and the second time all the way through it just sets you now Robert has to kill Damien and he mm. races home with the daggers like how does he get past airport security it's the 70s man. yeah, yeah it's the 70s. <laughs> I'm a president aide here you know what are the daggers for sir killing my son sorry <laughs> sorry Gregory sorry I didn't mean that joke um but then he finally gets home. He locks the dog up. Yeah, first thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I did also forget. He's he's just gotten off the fact that Catherine has been killed. Yeah. By Miss Baylock by turned Mrs. up. Mrs. Baylock. At the hospital. You know. We don't really see what happened. Uh, but we... She we, threw we, out we, Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just, for me, it's the, it's the scream she makes just before she hits the ambulance. It just yeah. kind of gets really kind of low pitched like a demonic growl as she hits it that's it it's a combination of of the nun of the uh, the nurses at the bottom because they look up here in the smash <laughs> oh! but he's he's such a broken man when he gets home he he, he locks the dog away uh in the basement that dog is scares the crap out of me but it's such oh, yeah. a, so well trained as well, well again behind the scenes the uh the rottweilers were n so non-aggressive that most of the rottweilers were just busy humping other rottweilers <laughs> on set to be too interested in the actors at all so much so that the, do the dogs wouldn't growl 
Apparently they had to use elastic bands to tie the back their lips so that the dogs looked intimidating Jesus. because all they wanted to do was come up and lick the actors and, and have cuddles. There's Gregory Peck. <laughs> yeah. I mean, with the, I mean, the graveyard sequence is quite terrifying with them run, obviously running around mm -hmm. uh, attacking both David Warner and Gregory Peck. Richard Donner also said he apologizes for reaffirming in the in the general public audience that Rottweilers were vicious animals when because they so weren't on se on set yeah. but the, the way the film presents them it just put that image on Man, them they're, they're not Rottweilers Almost forever. those are Satan's hounds see Satan's hounds are like completely different <laughs> sure. you know they will kill you on site to protect the Antichrist <laughs> uh, you know a Rottweiler just wants to nuzzle your nuts or whatever but after defeating the, the Satan's hound he comes up to uh, get Damien and throughout the film Mrs. Baylock has been sleeping in a room next to Damien's and I hadn't noticed until this sequence when he comes in and he's cutting Damien's hair that he first looks into Mrs. Baylock's room and I'm like, nope, no, 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 you know, no, if, you know, if, if ever, like, like as a father, you know, it was a case of, should we get a nanny? No, nope, <laughs> no, 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 we don't, no, we don't, we don't, we don't need one because Mrs. Baylock. That's fine. <laughs> you know. And uh, they, they end up having a bit of a scrap after he cuts away Damien's hair, realizes the numbers, the yeah. omen. Uh, she makes her appearance. You know, I love her face coming in out of the shadows. Oh God, yeah, it's great. And yeah. they have like a they, they throw each other around for a little bit. They stab each other. The actress, fucking like I don't know if it was a stunt man dressed as mm. a woman or you know if it's the, the two of them b fighting, but it was so aggressive that what kind of spoiled it for me was the the blood. Sure, you well, know, the film didn't want... Blood, there's not know. that much blood in the film at all. No, but the tinge... You know, yeah. I, I may, maybe I'm kind of spoiled now, but the whole fight sequence was great, and then that kind of... I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, this is something <laughs> I wanted to bring up, is the fact that all the people that made this film just go, yeah, it's not a horror movie. It's, about it's a psychological uh, thriller, mystery. And I'm like, I've seen this so much before. They did it on The Exorcist. They're like, yeah, it's not a horror movie. I've seen it on The Shining. They're like, yeah, it's not a horror movie. It, it's like the Hollywood system of protecting movies that they've invested millions of dollars in and they don't want it going out as horror because horror is sleaze. Horror is exploitation. Uh, horror mm. is the lowest form of entertainment. What was and Exorcist so they, to the heretic then? Art. It's an art, art, independent art house experimentation, but not a horror movie. And that's something that annoys me. I'm like, it is a horror movie. But they're just going, no, it's not. It's better than that. We're like, we're Oscar level. We're, you know, don't put us in that same category as, you know, as well, Halloween. I was going to say, horror is like, a genre. So it encompasses everything. But, um, but it, it's just yeah. the case that these, these actors, these directors, these producers, the studios would just try to defend it as not horror. Yeah. Because that, for whatever reason, elevates it in their you know their eyes. And I just think it's just a random thing that is, I've just noticed throughout the years that... They do that with horror movies, and that's why you don't see horror movies at the Oscars or getting big awards. It's because that they're frowned upon, and so they didn't want to frown upon this movie. But weirdly, yeah, but weirdly enough, they they are remembered more. You know, the, you know. Well, like, yeah, because like they th horror movies establish themselves and build a whole franchise on them. Where I can understand you don't want to build a franchise on The Exorcist or The Shining or The Omen, which they did anyway. <laughs> which they did anyway, and that's what makes me go, ah. Uh? <laughs> Like, I've never watched Omen 2, 3, or 4, and I never, don't think I ever plan to. The Omen 2's not bad. It's it's not as good as the first one. I was going to say, but... I think... It has some great interesting sequences in it. They kind of replace the dogs with crows. Uh, and it take, you know it continues the story of, of Damien. Omen 3 but yeah, I think is, that, is, is good enough that's as well. The pro that's the problem I think I've always had, is that it continues the story of Damien. Yeah. Damien grows up and has a life. Like I, I, like I wikied the, the synopsis of the movies, and it's just like, and does he take over the world and burn everybody to well, the Well, he tries to. Then? Sam Neill's version. What do you he's mean, all, tries? He's almost a president, and anyway, he's got to kill no. new baby Jesus who's being born. Yeah. and then... <laughs> So he goes around killing babies the entire film. Mm. I suppose that's why they want to elevate just, I suppose, these films, The Omen, The Exorcist, yeah. The Shining, the originals, you know, to, to to just keep them out of the muddy waters of whatever you think horror is. Building up to the end, you know, it is quite terrifying. Gregory Peck grabbing a small child from behind a chair, you know, and carrying, carrying him down these stairs, throwing him in the back of the car. And 
like I suppose he could have exited a little bit calmer, <laughs> you know, not to draw attention to himself. But no, he is racing towards the church, and once he gets there, he throws Damien down onto the altar, and he's about to pin him down with that dagger. And oh my God, knowing that his son had died from a suicide, it must have been the hardest thing. The, yeah, you know, like. Well, I mean, uh, he he had issues with the entire ending of the se- of the film as well. He was just like, no, he wouldn't do it. You know, the uh, Gregory Peck and Richard Donner they had arguments about how his character should react, how he should play the part, how they're going to film the part, and often or not, Gregory Peck conceded to Richard Donner's expertise in a way it was going to be presented, and usually well, he, agreed with him afterwards. Well, yeah, that he's going to act it, and and, and yeah. Richard Donner's going to direct it, and the two of them are going to come to a mutual. And it does end brilliantly with him because you don't. You, you want that you want the dagger to come down you yeah. want this child as an audience dead. you've seen everything you've seen Gregory everything. Peck's you know he, he hasn't seen all the things he's no, seen enough but he's to lost to everything death. as it yeah. was predicted from the beginning yeah. by the father and the gunshot and the way it just lingers on the bullet so you don't actually see Gregory Peck die no but that was the original just ending of the film there as well yeah I, and it was the studio who just went, um, we need you to expand that ending a little bit more. Uh, I don't know if I like this ending now, because knowing that, because it, it, it did fit towards the end, the, the, the funeral sequence, you know, the kind of mutual respect everybody had for Robert Thorne and his wife, you know, and it's such a shame that he dies and they've left this child. But then when it cuts and he does smile... Yeah. Oh. That, that's great. I mean, that makes up for the fact that the studio tacked that ending on you know that 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 turning around and smiling that just elevates the film as well because it has that psycho ending. Oh you know? yeah, 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 <laughs> and it, it, it's you know it it does feel like that you know like John Carpenter would have been sat there at one point going at the end of my film the killer's gonna get away right you know a bit like Damien smile yeah. Well, like I said, that would lead it into the second film where Damien does kind of get away again. You get the satanic reference about the demon rising. And then it's only in the third film where the story does come to its conclusion. And Sam Neill is, he gets shanked in the back and dies in front of God. <laughs> or, yeah. It's a bit of an anti-climax. <laughs> uh, I see what he did there. Yeah. But did you know there was actually an Omen 4? Uh, yeah, I had. Called The Awakening. Mm. And do you know what they did? They had Damien's child, a girl, yes. who's now the Antichrist. Yes. I was like, oh, they finally it's got the, there. They were, <laughs> spoilers, there's twins. Yes, yeah, yeah, there's two of them. There's two of them. <laughs> but did you know, Ian? <laughs> of course, there was the 2006 remake. Yes. Which, which was you... fucking awful. I... No, just no. Yeah. It was shot for shot. They didn't, you know, they, 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 they copied it because you made me watch the same film twice. Like, you didn't even experiment with you it. They, they also knew took, what was gonna happen the, at the end. They took the original script and didn't change anything. So much so that they had to pay the original writer of The Omen because they used his script again without paying him. And he was like, excuse me, but Mia you just Farrow stole my movie. as the nanny. She's it's not as good as the actress from the original. I don't know. Mrs. No, it's, no. 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 But there's also now an Omen TV series as well, which has been running for however long. I don't know. Yeah. I Did anybody I, care? Like I said, the, the film itself, the original film, sets itself mm. as just a standout moment in, in fucking film and history. You know, I, like I said, I was so completely shocked that it was, was Richard Donner after most people are, yeah, you know, coming realize. off the back of the fact that we've just done Goonies, I, I had, I had to, I had to stop doing so many favorite scenes in this movie sure. because they, they, they were so filmed, they were filmed so well that I, I was just like, you know, the whole opening sequence with him talking about how his son's death died. You know, I was like, I'm not going to go for that one, but I will. You know, one of my favorite sequences is the cemetery sequence. You know, just the whole build up. I know it's a set, but the the camera work, the way David Warner and and Gregory Peck have made me feel throughout the film that now they're going on this investigation. Yeah, a lot of the f- first half of this movie is a bit slow. Yeah, you know, it jumps five years, and I was just like, really? You let the Antichrist grow up for five years, like? I figured he'd be shooting flames out of his fingers, you know, and eyes turning. <laughs> uh, but having it, obviously, like I said, another favourite sequence was the, the nanny sequence. You know, him smashing, her smashing through the window. And Father Brennan, Gregory Peck, 
Keith, you know, all talking about the revelations in the Bible, the rise of the Antichrist, and then each one of their deaths, pow, 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 throughout the film. Favourite sequences, Gary? <laughs> oh, yeah, there's, there's a fair few. You mentioned the, the graveyard sequence. I think that is my absolute favourite sequence in the film. Yeah. Just from the lighting, the framing of the of the dogs in the foreground, oh, yeah. them in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just the, the raising tension of the sequence from for opening the graves to the actual dogs attacking and them... You know, you, you fear for their lives at that point. You actually yeah, think they're yeah. going to get mauled and killed by dogs. Yeah. That, which and when, uh, when he gets impaled, when he oh, pulls his arm on yeah, the gate, I'm yeah. just like, oh, it's mm. horrific. Yeah. yeah I, I'm so surprised when you said about the dogs were so, you know. So tame. So in tame reality, that. yeah. The, the way the film makes you feel, yeah. it's like, it's incredible. Yeah. Uh, so that, without a doubt, is my favorite sequence. Uh, Gregory Peck, I'm a huge fan of, of his work. A uh, fantastic actor. It's great to see that he came out of retirement to deliver such an iconic role in yeah. what has become an incredibly iconic film. The uh, the head decapitation sequence oh, is yeah, great. Yeah. The uh, the guard dog in Damien's room, just the way you don't even see it properly until its silhouette lurches oh, up oh, and God, the growling. Yeah. I was yeah. just like, oh, like that's like you're like, okay, my son has been lost. Like <laughs> the, the, the dogs will raise him now. <laughs> sometimes the silhouette of the camera looking down the corridor, and Mrs. Baylock, you know, just closing the door. She's like, I'm here to protect you now. Yeah. And she closed the door. I'm like, oh gosh. This... Yeah. 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 I really like the camera work. I like the sequence in the park with the priest sat on the bench and yeah, there's like that wide shot, and you can see the characters approaching. There's so much, so much uh, good camera work. Yeah. It's really quite well done. Which it's kind of a shame that I'm only really half recommending The Omen. Mm. This is a film I appreciate for the exceptionally talented people that produced it. But it's not a film that I ever recommend as I always found the film to be fairly dull, long-winded and a little forgettable. The performances by the cast are all great. And Goldsmith's music is top quality and still resonates today as as a spine tingling biblical nightmare. Yeah. For me, it's the best thing about the entire film. The cinematography is tight, and Richard Donner creates some truly great visuals along with some scary set pieces. The film is considered a classic and understandably so. It's a decent film. The suspense though, it's still palpable, but it's hardly frightening or shocking anymore. It's still definitely worth a watch, and I won't deny its historical value within the horror genre as one of the greats. Sadly, it just doesn't do it for me. I kind of agree with some of the things my friend says there. You know, if you overwatch this movie, or maybe some of the sequels, it will become spoiled. But luckily, I've only watched this film twice. I've seen the iconic sequences, don't get me wrong, a load of time. You know, in lots of different documentaries and lots of different TV programs. And I suppose, for me, when I sit down, when I go to sit down and watch The Omen, I'm like, ah, oh, I don't need to, because I've seen David Warner's head come off like a bazillion times. But, if you do sit down and watch this film for the fifth time or the 500th time, you have to kind of go at it as if it is still your first time. Forget that Damien is the Antichrist. Forget that everybody is going to die, you know. Just go in and watch Gregory Peck pull off an amazing performance. You know, David Warner pull off a stellar performance. Richard Donner just handles a camera like, well, like he, like he's gonna make some good films after this <laughs> one, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know. Just, just sit down and watch The Omen. Just don't sit with headphones on your own in the room because it's really scary. <laughs> Thanks for watching off-the-shelf reviews. Mm -hmm.